right, today we've got a freezer. They're saying it's running around 10, 10 degrees, 11 degrees. So I get here and I look at it. It's not running. Inside glass is less than desirable and does not appear to be in a defrost or anything like that. The compressor is semi-warm. Crank case heater's working, that's good. But I noticed the thermostat doesn't look like it's set correctly. I don't know if they fooled with it and then screwed it up or what. But it looks like it's set for about the temperature that it's keeping. So we're gonna go inside and double check that thermostat, but I wanted to come out here before I touched anything. Go through the cooler, then we come into the freezer. So I noticed right off the bat, the temperature there was set in the wrong direction. But I didn't want to move nothing. Let me make sure. No, actually, no, it's not. Okay, so we're turned down. I heard a click right there when I did that. Let's see if it uh, kicked on. It's really hard to get to anything. See, so stuff these things full. It feels like it might have came on. Just starting off right off the bat, I noticed the coil's not dirty. I noticed the coil's not froze up. Everything looks pretty good. So we might have a simple one here, just a thermostat. It's closed now. Probably clicked when I moved it. 122 and 122, so power's coming through. Let's go outside and see if it's running now. So it did not come on. We're gonna check our pressure switches here and see if one of them are keeping it out. It's obviously not in the defrost. I smell something electrical. Yep. Use your sniffer. I don't have anything on this right here. It's dead. I'm gonna have to yank this cover off and go grab my ladder. All right, got the cover off this puppy. Just giving it a visual inspection here. Oil's clean. I ain't sure what happened here, if that's just a rub through or what. And we're gonna have to look inside this box right here. It's probably where the good stuff's at. Yeah, something's something's smelling a little funky like a monkey. We can get to the defrost clock now that we don't have the cover block in it. Go ahead and see if we got uh, power on this. Okay, got 211 volts there coming into the clock. Got power going out on number four. Fairly close on time, it's within an hour or two. Jump down here to the next pressure switch. So I'm losing my power somewhere. Actually, it's all down in that box. I'm just jumped in the box. Clock's set for 2D frost up to 50 minutes. It does have the X terminal hooked up, so it is t uh, temperature terminated. I think it'd be nice if you turn this off. So. You guys seen the new Malco 516 38s reversible? electrical windings what it smells like Ooh, doggy so since we've got it unpowered oh yeah try to push in on that contactor she's a fried critter so go ahead and get that thing yanked out of there it's probably 208 it is dead. Rocket science at its best, but we're not gonna just replace it and bounce. We gotta make sure everything else is happy, go lucky. I got the contactor out. It is a 230 volt. Got an exact replacement here, which this is what we use. So we've obviously replaced this once before. So we'll just swap this wire for wire. I'm gonna say probably the winding on the uh, coil probably just burned up for whatever reason. Okay, this was definitely a pain in the butt. Every one of these wires needed trimmed. 
already didn't have enough wire to begin with. So it appears we got everything in the right spot. We'll go ahead and flip it back on, see if she runs. See whether or not the pressure switches kick on. There goes the fan, that's a good sign. Sight glass seems to be clear from what I can see from here. It's so nasty looking, it's hard to tell. Go ahead and get this back on. Well, that fan don't sound quite right. That seems a little quiet. Comes in on the blue. There, it just picked up speed. That's not good. So either we got a issue with that fan motor, which I'm pretty sure I don't have one. Now she's running, she's doing okay. Either way, then it probably should be replaced. Be kind of curious to know what our creatures are that it's cycling on and off at. Clamp on this, check the amp draw on it. Amp draw, point, point, 1.3. Get a picture of the motor tag there. These aren't 404 gauges, so I'm gonna go ahead and have to look up the chart. 230 is barely at 100 degrees. glass there see if we're bubbling out so far I just raised up my uh, cutout there 250 <clears throat> comes in about 105 and I'll shut off about 200 yeah a little sooner than that actually put a little more differential in it So 200 is about 90. I'd like that out of that. I don't like it usually below 90 degrees. And a little bit before 200. So can't win today, can we? Things just do not want to. So 255 is 105 degree saturation. I think it was about 210 it shut off, which would be about 92, which actually did a little bit better. So I kind of like that a little bit better than we had. And then as far as our amp draw, Looks like that fan motor is working now because it's warm, but as soon as it gets cold again, a cold start, it may not start up again. So I'm going to let them know about it and then uh, advise them I'd prefer to see it replaced. If they don't do it, it's notated on the paperwork and it won't be a callback. Generally, they want to take care of stuff like that. I went ahead and checked the voltage. Everything seemed fine on that. Other than that, sight glass is still full. And everything looks pretty good. We gotta go inside, reset that thermostat back to what temperature it was. Uh, the condenser coils are really clean. We're looking good there. Looks like our refrigerant charge is up on it. And uh, everything looks pretty cut and dry and decent, so. Uh, I'm gonna look at my truck, but I don't think I've got that motor. My motor selection's a little bit limited. A little bit of everything, but not a lot of anything. A lot of the little small ones, things like that. Very basic. And it's not looking very good. I have one Tecumseh here that does not look like the right one. Got one with a funky base. A lot of times I don't know these numbers. <clears throat> Most common ones you usually run into are the little little itty bitty ones here. Those are the most common that you see the most. I did not have the motor. So what I'm going to do here put one wire tie like that and then bring the other one here in the other direction. That way, 
keeps it isolated away from copper to copper. So tighten that one up. Put that one like that. There we go. No more shake, no rubbing. Here the tapping. Yeah, we popped the bottom off there. You can see that the uh, coil is uh, not doing so well. So, yep, that's that's what ended up taking it out was that coil. Crap wears out. Windings uh, lose their coating on it, and then snap, crackle, pop. Well, guys, that wraps that video up. If you liked it, please like, share, and subscribe. If you would, leave a comment down below. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one.